Now, I know that many of you do not enjoy playing Zerg vs. Zerg very much, and, you know, for good reason. I guess if your Zergling Baneling Micro isn't incredible, and you're not really willing, you know, to put in the work to make it any better, the matchup can be extremely frustrating, because oftentimes you don't really transition to watch a later stage in the game. Now, today, what I want to share with you is an all-in strategy that actually works surprisingly well. We're going to be pushing using a Creep Highway, so that does mean that we're going to be putting the overlords in like a little pathway between my base and my opponent's base. And we're going to be pushing with queens as well as with roaches. Now, there's a couple of rules that you need to keep before you start doing this build order. If it's a big map, forget it. You're not going to be able to get there in time. And, you know, you don't simply have enough overlords to really get the movement going. But there are a couple of tips that you can still take away from this strategy um, that will also make it work on other maps as well. Now, I would say, though, Frozen Temple, the map that we are currently on right here, is probably the ideal deal map just because the rush distance if you have a quick look uh, between my natural and my opponent's natural is relatively short plus when we get to this side of the map we can also attack the third and the natural quite easily so frozen temple is a really really you know good example of where this definitely does work out brilliantly now the funny thing is that this is actually a build that quite a bunch of pro gamers uh, do play as well once you scout it, it's practically, you know, it's practically over because you do need to, uh, you do need to, uh, you know, respond in time. And if you manage to scout it that your opponent is going for this build, you simply just start making an army in time. But the reason why it is so very strong is because you basically throw your opponent off of the strategy and you're giving them a read of what you are going for and then actually you do something completely else. So I'll show you exactly what I mean with that in just a little bit. So as far as the early game goes, I'm just going for a hatchery into a gas geyser into a spawning pool. A little bit more on the gradient, I would say in particular if you're somewhere in Master League and up, uh, it's relatively safe just because you don't really see the 13-12 shenanigans as often. But if you need to, you can obviously open up pool hatch gas or pool hatch gas or hatch pool. Like You can go for the different kinds of options uh, that will work according to your current skill level. Uh, but most of the time, this seems to work out just fine. Now... I'm gonna go for a Zerkling speed with my first 100 gas, and the reason for that is simple. I don't know if my opponent is planning to be very aggressive, and in most scenarios, you probably are going to be better off if you still get that link speed just in case. But we are not gonna get the immediate bailing nest, which is so very common. Now, another reason why Frozen Temple is such a great map for this strategy is because there's actually a nice little tight choke right here in the natural. So, notice right here, right? I can wall this off with two 3x3 uh, three three square buildings, such as a Roach Warren and an Evolution Chamber, which is coincidentally what I'm going for right here. And then I can wall that off with a two square unit, such as a Queen. So right here, if I pause it for just a little bit, I can put a Queen right in between those two buildings, and it will create a full tight choke. So that does mean that my opponent is not going to be able to break this. Now, here's the read that my opponent will get, right? He's gonna run forward. And he will see the shenanigans. He sees what's going on. Now, here's where the here's where the strategy becomes interesting. So most of the time, when you see something like this from your opponent, so say I'm going to be the red zerk in this scenario, you're going to make the assumption that your opponent is going to go for, um, you know, two base saturation. So that means economy in the main as well as economy in the natural. At which point they will start making a couple of roaches and transform uh, a third base in as well. So they really want to be getting that three base economy up before they really start moving out. Now, what makes it so funny and what makes it so far very powerful is that we aren't actually going to drone up the natural fully. We're just simply going to get about eight workers right here as well as the gas geyser. And that's it. That's really all we're getting. So we're getting full saturation in the main with one gas geyser, then half saturation in the natural also with one gas geyser. Obviously, you could get the second one in the main if you so desire. Now, what makes it so funny is that most of the time, your opponent is completely misreading the scenario. And actually, ever since I've been executing it, and I've gotten to the point where I'm actually allowed to move out, I've not had a single opponent scout the build that I am going for. Now, one more thing to note here as well is that oftentimes you are going to have to put your queen in like the little tight gap, I suppose, if you're, you know, in, uh, if you're, you know, not paying attention, obviously, if Zerklings run by, that's immediately gonna cost you. But anyhow, so I managed to get um, my Zerkling speed underway with the next 100 gas. I'm gonna be getting a lair right here. I wanna be getting with my next 100 gas right after the lair, uh, the plus one missile upgrade, which is really good for roaches. We'll go over why that is in just a little bit. And then we'll also go for the Roach Warren right here to create that tight choke. At the same time, I got that natural gas coming in here as well. And I'm scouting about here with my Zerklings. I mean, I will still get early Zerkling speed here, so there's no particular reason for me not to, at the very least, try and get a little bit of work in. Obviously, it is all about micro here as well. You really do need to make sure that you're controlling at least reasonably well. But I know now that my opponent has got a third base. So here's the thing, right? Once again, I'm gonna pause the game. 
I want to move across the map right when I hit my plus one attack as well as my Glyo Reconstitution, which is the Roach Speed upgrade. That is when I want to move across the map. Now, obviously, I do also want to bring the Queens. Queens are surprisingly good in combat. It's just an off creep. They're very, very slow. So the way I'm positioning my Overwatch right here is by creating a so-called creep highway. We're going to position them so I can use the drop creep ability right here to generate creep that you can get at the lair. I'm going to position them in a line between our bases. Now, in this particular game, I actually don't do it that well, but I've had a couple of others where the queens managed to do a ton of damage just because they managed to walk across the map, and, you know, just as fast as the roaches will. But as you may notice right here, I'm putting my overlords in sort of like a line formation. And you will notice this like a little bit longer the game goes on as well. I'm just going to put all of my overlords in between my bases and his bases. All right. So, once I hit those about 8 workers or so in the natural, and about, you know, 2 gas geysers, and then the 16 minerals, uh, or the 16 drones on minerals in the main, that is really what I'm gonna start my non-stop production. Now, notice right here, this is going to indeed be a full wall-off. I've already got 3 queens, I just sort of continually move those, or produce those whenever I can. And right now that my lair is done, I'm gonna be starting up my Glyo Reconstitution, and I'm just simply gonna start making a lot of roaches. Now, the reason why plus one missile is so very good for roaches is because without any upgrades, so say like you've got a couple of roaches going up against a couple of zerklings, it usually takes three hits from a single roach to kill that zerkling. However, if you get plus one missile on it, um, and your zerklings that you're going up against still do have plus one armor, which is basically the case in like every single match, they're actually going to be able to two-shot the, uh, the zerkling rather than three-shot it, which is extremely, you know, beneficial uh, for the player that is indeed going for uh, for the roaches with plus one missile. And the interesting part here is that in many scenarios, you will find that your opponent will not have roaches yet. So hold on, before we go any further into the game, right, let's have a quick look at what my opponent knows right now and why, once again, this is so powerful. So he has scouted the following, right? He has scouted the following. He knows that I've got a full wall of right here in the natural. He knows that I do not have a third base just yet. I mean, he's got units checking out whether or not I'm going to transition there. And he's got plenty of vision to be aware on whether or not I transfer the drone over there. Uh, so he knows right now that I'm actually in a pretty vulnerable position. Now, normally when you scout this, when your opponent is going for this build, all you really need to do is get slightly more economy than them and then start producing the exact same unit that they are going for as well. Reason being is that if you have more units that, or more drones than your opponent, you're gonna be able to produce more units as well. And on top of that, he's obviously got the defender's advantage, which means that any units that he's making are going to join the fight a little bit faster. So here's what he's trying to do. He's simply going for the full saturation in the main, full saturation in natural, and then a couple of drones at the third base. Usually it's anywhere between like four to eight or so, at which point he will start making his own roaches as well. Because he knows, hey, I got the same saturation that my opponent will right now, except I also have a third base and we're making the same unit. So that means that I do, you know, simply have more stuff. Now the way this fight turns around is by bringing the queens over. And that is something that Zerg players don't really expect. I've died to this build a whole bunch of times as well because... On paper, it makes perfect sense because you're going to be able to beat a roach all in. At least, you know, if you're playing it properly, you're going to usually be okay. But in this scenario, I'm not even getting that many workers, right? Remember, I'm only getting about eight or so in a natural plus three on gas. So if you already have a look at the income right now, it's 41 workers versus 30. And my opponent is still making drones just because he's assuming that I'm going to be playing a macro fake or a, ma a macro base build here instead. And that is what makes this build so very fun and so very cool and so very powerful to play. Uh, because your opponent is just usually completely misreading what is going on. Now, at the pro level, this is a build that a lot of pro gamers will throw out on the map uh, every now and then. For example, if it's like a best of three or a best of five and they won like the first game or two. Um, oftentimes, this is like one of those builds that is great to close out a series. Um, it's obviously a little bit more risky, but honestly, so far, I've got an extremely good win rate with it. And depending on like the league that you're playing at, I think you can probably pull it off as well. But anyway, so here the creep highway is being formed. I'm pooping creep with all of these uh, with all of these units. And I'm going to try my, uh, you know, I'm going to try to make my way across the map as fast as we possibly can. Now, I do want to take out any overlords along the way as well. But notice, I'm not quite executing this perfectly just yet. Got a couple of gaps right here in my overlord placement. And it will uh, not allow my queens to get here in time. But this is where I just finished up my plus one missile upgrade. It is right where I finished up my road speed as well. And I'm going to start dealing damage. Now, notice, right, I'm on a timer here. I know my opponent had more economy than I have for a very long time. So the one thing that I need to do 
is to make sure that I close the game out right here, right now. And that is where the micro comes into play. You really want to try and pull back the weakened roaches to the best of your abilities. If you manage to do so, you should be able to overwhelm your opponent. Now, my queens have indeed sniped a lot of the overlords along the way. I'm going to be able to hit a couple of transfuses and my opponent is forced to leave the match. So this is one of those builds, right? It's cheeky, it's cheesy, and it's one of those builds that may not work every now and, you know, may not work every game. But considering a lot of people dislike Zerk vs Zerk, and considering a lot of people don't uh, want to play the Zerkling bailing, you know, every single match that they have Zerk vs Zerk, if you are playing on the Frozen Temple, which is one of the, you know, strongest and well-rounded maps in the current map pool, or any map really with like a relatively short rush distance between the several bases, this is a strategy that you can easily make work. Now, notice right here, right, my queens were a little bit late to the party. If I would have had those, it would have been even easier. I believe in this fight, actually, I only lost like one roach during the entire engagement, just because of Micro. Uh, as far as, like, Roach versus Roach battles go, by the way, the plus one missile is extremely powerful as well. And let me show you exactly what I mean with that. Alrighty, so here we are in the unit test map. Now, this is basically just an arcade map where you can try out different compositions and let them just face off against each other. Now, if you want to search this as well, by the way, it's called LOTV Unit Tester. Just go ahead and search for that in the arcade and it should pop up just fine. But anyhow, so right here, I got a pretty realistic scenario, right? I got a bunch of Zerklings right here. Um, I believe in total those are going to be 35 Zerklings right there. And then I've got 10 Roaches on the other end as well. Now, neither of those have got upgrades. Um, so basically what I'm just going to do is just have them fight each other. And you will see that this is like a relatively standard sort of fight where the Zerklings are going to be able to overwhelm uh, the Roaches, right? And you can see, significantly so. Significantly so. Now remember, once you get plus one uh, missile on your Roaches, and that's exactly what I'm going to do right here, they're immediately going to be significantly stronger. So I'm going to give them plus one missile, and I'm also going to be giving them the Glyo Reconstitution, which is the Roach Speed upgrade, which is really like the one change that you see most often when you are playing ZBZ. And you will see very quickly that even though it's the exact same amount of units, right, this is going to change up the outcome of the fight significantly, just because the Roaches are able to clean up Zerklings so much easier than they normally would. And you remember, right, this is really just, you know, the Glyo Reconstitution upgrade I just got because it's, it's, it's more of like a standard type of thing. But just the one upgrade will completely and utterly change up the outcome of these two uh, forces right here. Alrighty, next up we got 15 roaches up against 15 roaches. Now both of these are currently unupgraded. Once again, after this one, I want to show you the strength of what these fights actually look like when you do give one of the sites, uh, you know, one of the missile upgrades as well as one of the... Uh, Glyo Reconstitution upgrade. So this is pretty standard right here. I think this is about the amount of roaches that we had when we initially moved across the map uh, and about the amount of roaches that my opponent was uh, defending with as well. Now for the next one, what I want to do is add on like three or four queens to the one end, give them plus one missile and give them roach speed as well. And while, you know, all of these units are relatively cheap, you gotta keep in mind, those queens were a little bit late to the fight. It's going to make an absolute massive difference to the outcome. Alrighty, so here we go. Now the queens are in a little bit of a funny position. I'm just gonna move this one, you know, to the back instead, just because we want to get a little bit of my, more of like a realistic type of scenario. I'm not gonna do any transfuses or anything like this. Uh, so the ones on the left do have plus one missile as well as Glyo Reconstitution. The ones on the right, right here, represent my opponent Roaches, and they are still in the exact same amount of numbers. They're just not going to be uh, upgraded whatsoever. And Really, like, you can see here, the AI actually seems to favor the blue ones, but you can see here that this fight will go substantially and utterly in favor of the red roaches. Basically, what I'm trying to say here is that if you manage to hit a timing where you got, you know, a couple of upgrades finished up, and this really goes for all of the matchups, but in particular in Zerg for the Zerg, uh, when you got the plus one missile and your opponent does not, move across the map it is so extremely powerful but anyhow i hope at the very least i got a couple of good ideas for you uh, and hopefully uh, and hopefully some of you are going to be execute some of these strategies in your own games as well if you like these type of videos let me know by hitting that like button down below and while you're at it make sure you subscribe as well so you get a notification as soon as i upload more also make sure to follow me on twitter instagram and facebook links are in the description and other than that i want to thank you all very much so for watching have an amazing day do not forget to smile all right and I'll see you in the next one.